Hey and welcome, my name is Daniel Ivanez. I'm an oil painter who became a digital artist and so I love digital oil painting in ArtRage Vitae. My tutorial today is gonna be um, starting out with some just basic fundamental first principles, really, really friendly for beginners and then we're gonna gradually work our way up to more and more sophisticated tutorials. Check out this tutorial to learn about ArtRage, learn about oil painting, learn about my technique, learn about my brush settings, how I make brushes and how I set up my canvas. We're gonna set up our canvas right now, going into canvas settings. I'm gonna set the paper to um, a rough paper texture with the grain set to 100. Um, these are some of the brush settings I've got there. You can see the aspect, the stiffness and stuff. We'll go over that more um, as we get into it. But first I wanna click over on the actively selected color and make sure that real color blending is turned on. ArtRage has had real color blending enabled forever, you know, since the beginning, I think. So, um, that means that when you mix blue and yellow paint, it literally makes green, just true green like you would find if you were painting with oils or acrylics or whatever tube-based paint you were using. Um, it's awesome and it works really, really well and you'll see the benefits of that in this painting. But firstly, we're gonna start with these settings. Um, the oil brush is interesting. All the brushes are interesting. ArtRage works just a little differently than everything else on the market. It uses these little sliders to change the virtual shape of the brush. Whereas in say Photoshop, you have a stamp and then you can control like the stamp and the texture of the brush. You can make brushes by changing the stamp and the texture and the way that those sorts of things interact. But the way ArtRage works is they have these virtual bristles that you can change the kind of the pressure, the thinners, the loading, the depth, the gloss aspect, rotation and stiffness of that virtual bristle. And, um, when you do that, you get wildly different uh, like outcomes, right? So as someone who's done traditional painting, and that's my background, I found this to be really intuitive, really natural, and works just like I would expect it to work. Um, you can have a square head, a round head brush. You can make a traditional round. You can make almost like a fan brush. You can make a filbert or a flat. And the brushes have... Um, a real nice believability in the way that they interact with that digital canvas. Here you can see all I'm doing is blocking local color with my custom brush. And um, I like doing this step as fast and geometric as possible. Um, you can see that I am color sampling from the reference picture. And this is a copyright free reference picture from pexels.com. And I'm color sampling from the, the reference picture. I know that's not always like a best practice, but I'm starting to use this as sort of like a beginner tutorial where if you're just trying to get used to new software, you're trying to get used to new, uh, new program, new tools, um, or if you're just trying to go really fast, um, sometimes I'll let myself color sample in that regard or doing tutorials or whatever like this. Um, color sampling is, is uh, you know, it's one of those things that, that some people love, some people hate, some people frown upon. Um, and it is one of those sort of like cheat modes in digital art that you have to decide how and when and if you're going to use it. Um, that said, in a beginner tutorial, I have absolutely no qualms about jumping in with the color picker where you can just alt click and tap on any color in the reference image and jump in with, with grabbing that color and quickly applying that on your painting. This painting was fun for me because, um, I love doing sci-fi fantasy work. I'm getting ready for San Diego Comic-Con. Hopefully it happens uh, in, in, you know, in a traditional sense this year. Um, what I just did there is I pushed H on the keyboard to flip the canvas so I could see if my proportions were accurate and my drawing was, was good and I think it felt all right. So I'm gonna move on. Um, I like using this very angular flat brush. It's an oil brush setting that I, I custom created for this kind of work. And I, I think using an, a flat with a real angular mark, it's very geometric. It has a, a strong graphic look and uh, it just has a lot of pop. So working with this brush is great for starting out because everything is just very, um, it just has a lot of impact, right? Um, we work from dark values through the midtones into the lights. Um, and, and that's just to keep ourselves organized in, in terms of process. Uh, starting with the darks of the painting is helping you get the bones established, help you get those um, all important sorts of, uh, there's the structure of the piece established. And once you get that in, you can feel that quality of the light, you can feel the light direction. Um, then you can start playing with little things and little refinements and tweaks and stuff. But before that's in, you, you, you're really nowhere. So you got to get those darks in right away and, and start establishing the bones of the piece. 
Um, that said, um, you can see me now using even larger brushes. Uh, one of my big beliefs is that, that the bigger brush you use, the better. Um, now here's what I'm doing right now. I'm playing around with making new brush. Um, I wanted one that was had the, the same, if not a little bit better coverage. So what I did was drop the stiffness down. That gives me less of a bristly mark and gives me more even coverage. And then I bring the thinners up, which is going to give me slightly... Um, just a little less bulky of a mark. It's going to be a little less 3D. And and now using that same mark, but pu pulling the loading way down and pushing the thinner up a little bit more, it's going to give me kind of a, a foggy, almost smoky mark where it's like a dry brush technique. And it's really going to pick up on the tooth of the paper, this kind of rough paper texture that I've got. I wanted it to look like um, sort of an oil painting on on like a cold pressed paper. And so that's that's kind of the effect I have. And using this brush setting that you can see here with the thinners at about 48%, the low 40, 50%, the loading down really, really, really tiny it means that you're not putting very much pigment on the on the brush. And then you're just kind of skimming across the canvas texture and it's gonna pick up a lot of that tooth. You'll see that this particular brush is gonna um, knock down some of the bristly, bold bravado of the initial strokes. And that can be good or bad, depending on what you want to have. Um, sometimes you want things to look really bold and bristly, and other times you want them to look smooth and kind of refined. So with Art Rage, the way you do that is playing with loading, playing with stiffness of the brush, and playing with the thinners. You can really make the, the paint do anything you want. You can have it be bristly and textured. You can have it be thin and, and kind of, um, like I said, sort of smoky with that kind of um, picking up the tooth of the canvas. And then you can change the canvas to be whatever kind of tooth you want. There's a lot of things going on here in Art Rage where you're mixing um, the the kind of loading of the brush. More loading equals more paint. The stiffness of the bristles, and then the sort of the you know that gives you more or less kind of like uh, scratch and 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 kind of ridge in your stroke. And then you also have the ability to control kind of the the thinness. Um, it's a, just a totally different way to set up. A paint program for digital artists they might be like wow this is weird right but for a traditional artist it's the only thing that makes sense so art rage has been a great tool for me to use in in um in my journey into digital art and i've had a heck of a lot of fun you know and, and through art rage that was sort of my gateway drug to all digital art tools and you know i paint with everything these days but i always come back to art rage because there's really nothing else that works like it, it like it works and um i always use our rage for its oil painting that's i think it's its strongest tool um and seeing as i'm coming at this with a background in oil painting that makes sense that i love it right so um here you can see me just going in and adding some of the warm tones reflecting off of the the stone wall into that cool shadow of the helmet um now i'm going in and trying to refine in some of the highlights and shadows, little just flecks of brush strokes to suggest highlights or the edge or rim lighting on something and a little piece of the armor reflecting here or a little piece of the cloak kind of absorbing like the shadow, getting the occluded shadows in there or whatever. Um, this is that part of the painting where I'm working quickly, but I'm I'm being a little bit more careful about the little things, you know, catching little rim uh, ridges of light, little edges of this, little flex of that this is where i let my brush be smaller this is where i let my my um tool be more detail oriented and i think this is a really fun part of the painting and it's it's a way to get back you know to, to sort of satisfy that longing for making things look really pretty you know um I'm a, I'm a real big believer that in the beginning of the painting you should just be bold and crazy and just get as much uh, uh, paint on the canvas as possible right away and I set up my brushes in the beginning to really be good at that and let everything be big and bold and messy and now I've got my brush set up to be a lot, lot more refined you know um, my thinners back to zero my my loading is is only at about seven percent and then I have the stiffness pulled down so I get kind of a smoother mark this is a great brush for doing nice choppy but still kind of smooth finishing work it's just a good all-around brush so throughout this painting process i've been able to show you at least four different brush settings for how i might use different brushes with different settings for different parts of a painting and that's going to be dependent on you you know how you would want to employ this but 
I just kind of want to talk about the tool itself. Again, for we're talking about maybe beginners in Art Rage. Um, you know, there's tons of different people that can show you how to start a painting or how to finish a painting, but it's important to learn how to use a tool and and make it work for you. So um, I want to show you one more quick tip here before we get to the end. I made a new layer and I set up a new brush that has almost no loading, no thinners, and has a lot of stiffness in the brush. On the brush, so that's going to give the bristles are going to be just really kind of ridge ridge like. There's going to be a lot of like gaps and negative space in each brush stroke. So it's very much like a traditional dry brush technique. And when you do dry brush, what you're doing is you're scraping texture across an already dry canvas, and you're going to be able to see the paint coming from underneath, and you're going to see that mix with kind of what would be like optical mixing. So you're, you're seeing the two colors together or the two textures together at the same time. And it's a very cool way to add a whole nother layer of life to your painting without having to do anything that's destructive to the initial layer. Um, and here you can see I put the loading back up so I can get more kind of a longer stroke. In Art Rage, because the paint stays wet, um, sometimes layers are helpful if you want to go into sort of like if you want to do something that's really detailed without without it mixing at all with the layer underneath you can always set in the brush the insta dry setting which will um, put paint down that will not mix with what's already there but for me i'd rather keep everything as wet so that wet on wet mixing is always happening um, it saves you tons of time to work that way uh, and it's really nice as it simulates how oil paints really work but then uh, instead of changing that insta dry setting i usually just create a new layer and do my dry brush stuff on a separate layer like that very very fun very very cool um here you can see that um the setting i'm using is a, is a a really advantageous brush for knocking in some of that last little detail and you can see the paint mixing between the layers you can see the textures mixing between the layers you can see the way that that optical mixing is happening because the the brush stiffness is kind of scraping across that canvas and it's just a very satisfying outcome. Art Rage is, uh, is at its best in its oil painting and um, if you can kind of approach it like a traditional oil painter, you'll have a heck of a lot of fun. Embracing the wet on wet on the canvas, the canvas um, is going to interact with the three-dimensional paint body. It's going to give you natural paint mixing as you're working and you're going to enjoy it if you can handle a little bit of chaos. So um, you can set it up so that it's got a lot more control. You can set the thinner so that the paint doesn't mix super a lot. But for me, I like to kind of let it be bold. I let it be a little bit crazy. Let it be a little bit messy. And I kind of work everything as if it was kind of a la prima or like I'm painting directly with my subject. I like to work everything as though it's like a quick concept sketch or, or a thumbnailing because I think in that I get a lot more freshness and I think Art Rage does a great job with that freshness with the oil paints. So hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial, a uh, quick look at my paint style, quick look at my techniques and also a very beginner friendly setup for grabbing paint and, and painting uh, from a reference. Thanks so much.